am.com and as always stay comfy hey everybody it's chris denman be sure to join myself travis terrell and the cast of thousands on st louis live monday through friday 7 to 10 a.m right here on 9 20 a.m wgnu and stream it online at weareliveradio.com John Simmons Show. After years of battling a gambling addiction, John found a hope and a future for his life through Christ. He has spent the last several years encouraging others to find joy, peace, and hope in their lives by walking out God's plan for their lives. Now, John wants to help you find the passion, vision, and faith you need to start writing out God's sentence for your life and help you add to it every day. Four lines are now open. Call or text 314-880-0808. Now, here is your host, the new John Simmons. Come meet this motley crew of misfits. These liars and they speak. There's no one unwelcome here. And that's an insane... Welcome. The new John Simmons Show, part of the Testimony House Network, where you can find God's sentence for your life and become the new you, where we talk about finding passion, vision, and faith in your walk with Christ so that your life can overflow with joy, peace, and hope today. Welcome, everybody. Excited to be with you here on this evening edition, as they all are, at least from where I'm standing. I'm here at 9 o'clock each and every night on your radio, on iTunes, and also at NewJohnSimmons.com. Also, if you have uh, one of those apps on your phone that says Facebook on it, you can find us there. We stream video of the show live every single evening we have a show, and I'm in the studio. A lot of caveats. Later in the week, I won't be here in the studio, so you won't get the live stream then. But tonight, we're here. Facebook.com slash Show is your direct access to our live stream. Uh, tonight's conversation, a uh, little little uh, off topic from what we've been sort of talking about more recently, a little heavy-handed subjects. I wanted to sort of talk about something more exciting, something that can touch more of us than uh, just a, a conversation about a Bible verse. And I want to talk about this new movie that's come out, and uh, we're going to see it this weekend, my wife and I. Looking very much forward to it, it is this new movie called Paul, the Apostle of Christ. Paul, as we know... Uh, famous, famous Christian. He wrote a lot of the New Testament. He was a persecutor of Christians, and then he became a Christian himself who began to be persecuted. More on that later. But I want to just talk about this film and encourage you guys to not only go see it, but also just answer some of the questions that this film brings to our attention. For those of you on the live stream, you can see my Jesus Easter shirt. I think you can see it pretty well. I think my BRB, <laughs> you know, Easter weekend's coming up. Very excited about Easter weekend. Uh, very excited to visit my church and be uh, together with all the believers. Easter, a special time of year for all believers because we get to bring our friends. I have some questions about Easter coming up. If we don't get it to a tonight's show, we're going to talk about it tomorrow, about the Easter upcoming Easter weekend and some of our Easter expectations. So a lot to get to tonight. Lots of thoughts in my mind about what's going on in the Christian faith, and especially on a weekend like this where everybody sort of turns towards Christ just like at Christmas. I don't think, and you can disagree with me if you feel like it, that when the world stops for Christmas and the world stops for Easter, but we don't stop for holidays for any other deity, I don't think that's a coincidence. I think that's just, you know, God, you know, cementing his rightful place as uh, above all things. And Easter's a great weekend for us to go to church, obviously, but even more so, it's just a time to remember who Christ was on the cross for us and the life that he spent to die as payment for our sins. We can learn a lot through the lives of other believers, and Paul is one of them. Obviously, he wrote a majority of the New Testament, so we can look into the things that he experienced and the way that he realized who Christ was and how he shared that with us via scripture, and we can pull a lot from that, but I I like the idea that they're taking his story and turning it into a motion picture. Uh, I don't believe this is the first one. This might be the first one that's made it to theaters in my generation, and I'm very excited about this. I don't think that they make 
Christian films often enough. You'll never hear me say, oh, there's too many Christian movies out there. I am a champion for all things Christian program related, whether it's your radio broadcast. We've got plenty of those. In fact, you know, we ha- at the station here, we have an entire station dedicated to Christian programming. And when you go on your TV channel and you're surfing through, you can find several channels dedicated to Christian programming. And all of them stem, or at least are founded in shows that are presenting the gospel to people who already believe the gospel. I I find that it's, for me, you want to reach the lost, you want to reach people who are really seeking Christ, go where they are. Movie theaters, go into secular radio. Don't just spend time on the Christian dial. That's why we're intentional with where we put this show. I want to be able to encourage those that don't know Christ. And I want to be able to share with you the stories that I went through and how I lived a completely outside of life, outside of Christ's life. And then I found Christ and then my life got turned around 180 in the same way you experience and read about Paul doing. Paul was literally killing Christians for their beliefs. This guy was in charge of an army that killed Christians simply because they were Christians. We don't see a lot of that in America. It's still happening overseas and in countries where people are murdered and martyred for their faith in Jesus. But in the early days of the church, imagine the idea that just leaving your house and telling anyone that you believed in Jesus was it was a reason to be put on a cross and crucified for yourself, to be martyred, to be stoned to death hangings, how many terrible ways did they kill people back in the day? And for us, just even going to an Easter service now is sort of, we hem and haw about it, maybe we don't go, and if we do go, we're excited about it, but the next week we're not as excited because it's not so much fun. We're not getting super dressed up, we're not going to hunt Easter eggs, we're not having a great Easter dinner, you know, we're not hearing the same story and, you know, being nostalgic for all the Easters in our past. Imagine if you actually wanted to do those things, but if you did them, you would be murdered for them. I don't think Easter service would be filled up. (laughs) I think Easter service at my church would be a, a ghost town if they were murdering folks for just showing up. But this is what it's like in parts of the world today and definitely what it was like in the early church. People were used to what it was like and what it was like back then, the Old Testament covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, the follow the law covenant where Moses, you know, wrote the commandments and wrote the 600 and something laws that the Jews were supposed to follow in order to find salvation, find eternal life through God. And when Jesus showed up, he changed the rules for us. He, he wrote a new covenant a new covenant that allows us access to God personally, one-on-one. We don't have to allow our priests, as in the Old Testament. We don't have to sacrifice animals for forgiveness of our sins. No, Jesus paid that cost. We have access to God and our own personal relationship with him through Christ. We have the ability to find salvation through Christ alone. We no longer are tied to all of these laws and rules that if we break one of them and we don't get clean before we die, things bad things happen. No. Our faith in Christ as our Lord and Savior is enough to find access into heaven eternally. And true faith, not just, hey, y'all, I'm a believer. That's what I used to say. Oh, no, I believe in Jesus. I did believe in a God. I mean, I just looked at the world growing up and the idea of the Big Bang and the thing that some people believe in that sort of we came out of nothing, that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me personally. I didn't, I thought the world was too perfect. It was too good. I mean, the fact that our bodies heal themselves, the fact that, you know, we breathe in with the trees give out, you know, like we need water to live. And there's so much like you just start looking at the earth and our function on it, our ability to eat the things that grow out of the ground. And, you know, all of these things seem too perfect to not be created by someone or something. Now, did I believe in the God of the Bible? I have no idea. I just believe that somebody did all this. And I want to encourage you to see my history because it reminds me a lot of what Paul did. Paul was the, you know, the originator of the of the worst the first <laughs> testimony in the New Testament. 
He really did. I mean, if you talk about God's grace being apparent in our lives today, Paul was walking in it, man. He had forgiveness from God after he murdered a bunch of God's people. If you think you're not getting into heaven because you have tattoos or because you you had sex before you got married or you had an abortion or something, you know, that you think is the worst thing that's ever happened. I think God likes to use people like that. <laughs> use a washed up poker dealer, use a murderer of Christians, use whatever you did in your past. Guess what? You find forgiveness at the cross. Jesus died so that you can be forgiven of those sins. No sin is bad enough to keep you out of heaven if you confess Christ as Lord. Paul, obviously the ultimate example of this in the Bible, one of, at least. One of my favorite Bible characters, and I'm very excited to see the on-screen account of his life. Very excited to dive into this land, this story. That's We miss these stories. These stories are not being told at the big screen very often. You know, we've got the Bible to open and we can read them, but there's a reason, and even more recently, we've seen some of the Christian films really uh, become popular. Now, they're still not churning them out at a rapid pace. You know, you can look at the last four or five years and still count just a few dozen that made the big screen. But there is an audience for them. They're making a lot of money. And, of course, Passion of the Christ, which came out, more than a decade ago, is one of the still is still one of the highest grossing films of all time, and I think it still holds the record for the highest grossing R-rated film. At least it's in the top five of that as well. So there is reasons to make Christian films from a a Hollywood standpoint. We've talked about this at length on the show. Not every film that comes out about the Bible is worth watching. There are some people who are making films that have not necessarily opened the book and really studied the scriptures that they're basing their material on. One of my favorite things that I saw, it was just so terrible. It was just awful. You just look at it and you go, how did that get through the gates? You know, those movie scripts, if you know anything about movies, like they go through lots and lots of drafts and you know, they, they share their ideas, and it takes a long time for the script that was written, you know, a year and a half ago to start being filmed by these major motion picture studios, you know. So in this film, Noah, one of my favorite Bible characters, maybe yours too, Noah, of course, built this boat. And in the film, it depicts that someone is on the boat that wants to kill Noah. (laughs) That's so crazy. How did this make the movie? Like, this goes beyond, like, adding someone whose name we don't see in the Bible. This is adding a whole other plot that, like, you know, you're you're adding a carrot, a whole other chapter into the Bible. Uh, In the the movie Noah, uh, spoiler alert said, (laughs) there is a man trying to kill Noah on the boat. (laughs) And he almost sinks the boat. It's a whole thing. Nowhere in the Bible is this man even mentioned, and even if he was real, there's no way he was on the boat because the Bible is clear to tell us who was on the boat. I'm sure God didn't say, well, there was that one guy that was trying to kill Noah on the boat. I'm sorry I left that part out. <laughs> oh, why, does, why is that okay? We get mad when people, like, recast roles. I remember when I, one of my favorite movies when I was in high school and college was The Matrix. And they recast the roles of the guys who were on the ship, uh, Dozer and his brother, and they recast those roles uh, for new people in the second films. And you're like, man, why is that? You know, why the Oracle got recast? I remember being so upset about this, and it it speaks to who we are as people. You know, we like who we like, and we want what we want. And when I'm watching a Christian film, I would at least like to see the story be told in a way that <laughs> it matches at least in broad strokes, what the Bible's trying to tell me. Don't add a character. Don't say there was Noah's brother, Boa, and he was on the boat and his six kids. And, oh, guess what? There was a second boat, and the second one didn't make it. So it was only Noah's boat that made it. Like, that's, it, it sounds just as ludicrous for me to say that as it was for me to watch, 
You know, this guy trying to kill Noah on the boat. How ridiculous is this? The Paul movie, though, uh, I've I've looked into it. This is being made by a, a Christian studio, written and directed by a Christian director, starring Jim Caviezel, who you should remember. He played Jesus in The Passion of the Christ, if you don't remember the name. He'll be playing Luke, the doctor, who goes to who risked his life to visit Paul, as it says here in the notes of the film. Uh, Paul is held captive in a Roman prison under Nero's rule. Together, they will struggle against a determined emperor in the frailties of the human spirit in order to live out the gospel of Jesus Christ and spread their message to the world. This is the synopsis of Paul, Apostle of Christ movie that's out now. I'll be watching this weekend. Before we go to break, let's play a clip from... Uh, some of the people who've created the film. I've got several of the clips uh, of the people, the director, the producers, the cast. I've pulled some clips for to share with you tonight on the show because I think when you hear the heart of the people who are making this film, it'll encourage you more than just wanting to see the story. You'll see really the importance of going to support films like this because it's important as Christians we watch these films and we don't just stand by the sideline and go, oh, that's nice they made that. No, we need to get into the theaters. We need to support them financially. We need to be encouraged by their stories. And if we have the chance, we also need to bring people who are lost or people who need some guidance or people who need some encouragement. Even if you're a born-again believer, a movie like this can absolutely help us. I mentioned how Noah didn't stick to Scripture. Paul's trying to do that. So let's look at this clip that says Paul's connection to Scripture. The name Saul means great one. And Paul, the name, just by one change of a letter, means little one. In order for us to be great in the eyes of God, we have to become very small. Paul focused so much energy in his writing on Christian living, dealing with persecution, with grace and with patience and relying on God. And those themes and those words and those passages are hit very strongly in this film. The survival of Christianity rests with just a couple, couple of people. Always the first step is in when we're writing the screenplay and developing the project is study scripture. We just stay with scripture as the only source material. And then when we start to bring the humanity side of it, it just comes very naturally because we've done all the research and we've gotten all the experts to sign off. And so, for instance, an example is why is Luke so prominent in the film. Well, in 2 Timothy, when Paul's writing from the Mamertine prison, there's this tiny little bit right at the top of the letter that says, only Luke is here with me. And so it just starts to build this beautiful palette that is 100% scripturally accurate. You know, you are filling in the details, but it's all there. It will be a very beautiful, emotionally very moving film with a rather wonderful ending. And Redemption is offered and is clear. Paul, the Apostle of Christ in theaters now. I want to encourage you to go check it out. I love this idea that, hey, they've gone through the work. They haven't just read a Bible scripture and they're like, hey, that'd be nice to make a movie about that big event or that big moment or that epic battle. Instead, they said, no, let's look into the scriptures. Let's see why the people were there, who was there, what are the stories that we can pull out of this. I'm very excited to see this movie, and when we come back, I'm going to tell you reasons why you should watch it and also continue to talk about the things that we can pull from this movie that will encourage us in finding God's sentence for our life. Don't go away. You're listening to The New John Simmons Show, part of the Testimony House Network. It knocked me down. Faithfully Fit and Wellness is St. Louis's all-new faith-based fitness program. Not only does Faithfully Fit want to see you shed pounds,
protecting our communities. One detail at a time. Because a lot of little details can become a pattern. We. 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 We trust our instincts. Just like you should. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your everyday. So protect your everyday. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Take control of your money. Start by listening to The Dave Ramsey Show. If you want to win with money, let me give you a good idea. Figure out what most people are doing and run in the other direction. Most people are broke. Most people look good and they're broke. They spend more than they have coming in. They don't live on a plan. They don't have money set aside for emergencies. Normal in America is broke and stupid. You don't want to be normal. The Dave Ramsey Show, weekdays at 1 p.m. right here on WGNU. WGNU, the talk of St. Louis. Broadcasting on 920 a.m. and 106.9 f.m. Want to see behind-the-scenes photos and get the latest news from the show? All you have to do is follow at New John Simmons on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, let's get back to the New John Simmons Show. See the rain hit the ground and the lightning flash around. Tap the windows to the sound of the maker. Here is what you alone. Welcome back to the program, everybody. It's the new John Simmons Show. It's part of the Testimony House Network. I want to thank everybody for joining us, both live on Facebook and on your radio. Catch the past episodes over in the Apple iTunes podcast store, and we're going to have a lot to talk about in the rest of the show. Considering the fact that I'm going to see this new movie that's come out, Paul, the Apostle of Christ, I'm very excited to talk to you about it tonight because I don't think that there's enough Christian films being made right now, and I want to encourage us who are believers and those who are just seeking answers. Maybe you, you know, you've you heard about the gospel. You, you've heard the Easter story a million times. You've been to Easter church, but it's just never resonated with you. A film like this can really touch your heart or show you some things that you didn't realize were true about the gospel. Do you remember the stories of, and I even knew this even before I found Christ, when the passion of the Christ came out, all these people were you know, basically getting born again in the movie theaters, finding Christ as their Lord and Savior simply because of a film. A very powerful message can do things like this. I saw that movie Risen. Last February, a Christian film came out called Risen. I think it was made by the same studio who's doing this Paul movie. And it was a film uh, from the perspective of the Roman centurion who uh, saw Christ crucified and was completely skeptical about who Christ was and his, you know, confession of being the Messiah. Meanwhile, in the course of the film, he sees Jesus resurrected. He sees him walking around. He sees how many lives Jesus touched and how it affected him. And he ends up becoming a believer in a time, like we've already mentioned on tonight's show, it was very difficult to be a believer in the early church. Christians were being persecuted and murdered simply for having faith in Jesus as Messiah. How difficult would it be in our lives today? I'll bring it up again because I think it's worth sharing on Easter weekend when you and grandma and auntie and uncle and we're all getting together, we're all going to church. Even those of us who don't go to church on a regular, we're going to be there on Sunday looking at our watch, (laughs) waiting for, for lunch. It's okay. Been there. I've been there. But what if on your way out, people were ready with guns and to pull you aside and ask you, we'll kill you if you confess Jesus as Lord. But if you don't, we'll let you go. Oof. That's a scary thought, isn't it? This happens overseas. We've seen this. And, and not just then. The, the martyrs of the Bible were persecuted for their faith in Christ. They answered the question, in the affirmative, of course I believe in Jesus Christ as Lord, at the risk in the peril of their own natural life. Church wouldn't be as full on Easter Sunday. Thankfully, we have, I mean, real thankful. Thankful we have a country that we live in where we have the ability to worship in a way where we might be persecuted verbally. People might think we're dumb. We might get called brainwashed. You might just get you know, your eyes, people roll your eyes, their eyes at you. But no one's threatening my death. At least not yet. 
simply for my beliefs. But this was what Paul did. Paul was a murderer of Christians. He went from zero to hero. He went from 180 degrees backwards to the path that he was walking. He found, ultimately, God's sentence for his life. Let's play a clip from the cast and the crews and the makers of Paul, the Apostle of Christ, that talks about the heart of the Paul story. Our story takes place at the very end of Paul's life. He's in the Mamertine prison in Rome. He's been accused of burning down half of Rome by Emperor Nero, and he's alone and in the darkness. And if you remember from Acts of the Apostles, a very important figure in Paul's life is Luke, the physician. And so our story is about Luke sneaking into Rome to bring some solace to Paul in his last days. And what comes out of it is that Luke and Paul decide we need to get Paul's story to the world. And this is sort of the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles being written. Very, very difficult days of early Christianity. And this is Paul's last few moments to convey the message of hope and love and forgiveness to the community and that they must hold fast to the faith, no matter what dangers they face. When I looked at this screenplay, I was amazed at the survival of Christianity rests with just a couple, couple of people. Priscilla and Aquila are, are hiding out, essentially, and taking people who need help. They were facing persecution, they were facing obliteration, they were facing exile, they were facing many, many things. And they still welcomed people, they still accepted people, they still loved people. And that, that is easier said than done. It's a modern story. This is why Shakespeare is still relevant today, Molière, and the great stories never die because they talk about human beings and humanity. This film, to me, is one that goes out to the world. It goes out and says, this is what these guys were. And the people that are going to watch it are going to say, wow, they're a sinner like me. And, and very human, very believable, very round. They have doubt, they have fear, they have anger. They're very real. The notion that someone could make a radical change in their life, that could go from being a thug to being one of the most important people in religious history, intrigued me. We have a tendency to put people like that on a pedestal. And there's almost becomes this disconnect, like I'm not as holy as they are. You know, um, God set them apart in a unique way, in a special way. It's not the same as me, but the reality is they were just like us. They weren't born with halos around their heads. Here's a man, Paul, who went from the ISIS of his day to becoming the leader of a church community. And I thought, is that, do we really think that that's possible today, that a person can change? Um, I think the modern way of looking at people is that like, once you do something, uh, that really defines your life. And I think Paul helps us show that no one is beyond God's grace, that um, there's always a chance. Really, Paul brought the faith to a wider church in the face of everything. And his uh, adamantine soul, we have to be very grateful for. This old, beaten, worn down man who had had left everything on the playing field for Jesus. You know, he, he lived this life and was at the very end. To see this frail old man and think that the emperor of the largest kingdom in the world was fearful of this broken man shows the power of Christ through his followers, through his believers. I just am so excited to tell this story uh, and, and offer these themes to the world at a time when I think that we are so desperate to hear these things, to hear that we're loved, to hear that there is mercy and grace for anything, to hear that, that there is a God that's bigger than us, that loves us, and, and that we cannot fall too far from his grasp. Uh, these clips are coming from paulmovie.com. Paul, the Apostle of Christ, in theaters now. You can buy tickets. On the website, you can also watch these clips. The people who have made this movie have made it very easy for us to get encouraged to see this film, not just because it's a story that's in the Bible, not just because, hey, you're a Christian, this movie's for you. 
but this is a real story, a real story of overcoming. Isn't this the favorite types of movies we really like to see? The movies where the underdog gets the girl or the person who's going through a lot of hardships ends up winning the medal or the game. You know, these stories of the arc where a person's down and maybe things are going okay and then they go worse down and then they come back at the end. Stories of overcoming are our favorite stories. We tell them all the time, and it's the natural story of a human life. Jose Martinez, who's a uh, Roman soldier in the film, he said in this last quote, that great stories will never die because they are about great human beings. I absolutely believe this sentence. <laughs> From my perspective, we see the stories that our lives write. Is testimonies. We call them testimonies around here, but you can call them just stories. You can call it your life story. And when you see the life that you live before Christ and after Christ, you should see a real turnaround in who you are and what you've overcome and the future ahead of you. Our movies that we like the most are the movies with the happy endings. Faulkner, who plays Paul in this upcoming film, said that the ending provides redemption, both for Paul and the opportunity for redemption for those that are viewing the film. I love this idea that they'll bring you to a point where you can find Jesus as your Savior if you choose to believe. And when you believe in Christ, this change should start to happen. It happened immediately in Paul's life where he went from murdering Christians to sharing the gospel of Christ. What was Paul's sentence from God? You might ask, since we talk about finding God's sentence all the time, well, what was Paul's sentence? The Bible tells us. In Acts 9, 15, it says about Paul, This man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, excuse me, God, uh, I think you got this second part wrong. <laughs> I don't mind doing the first part. I don't mind being your chosen instrument. I don't mind carrying your name before the Gentiles and kings and the people of Israel. But uh, you, you in the second part, the second part, do I got to suffer so much? I got to suffer so much, like for real. The letter to the Corinthians, Paul describes being shipwrecked and beaten, stoned. He was bitten by poisonous snakes. He was beaten with rod and lashes. And none of those attempts on both his life and his faith. He was imprisoned for most of his Christian life. None of those things prevented him from sharing the gospel of Christ or giving up the faith that he found after killing Christians. I mean, imagine how strong your faith must be to have lived a life where you killed people because of their faith. And then now you are the person in their shoes where you're willing to die for your faith, the same faith that they expressed. Imagine what it must have been like for Paul, who was leading the murder of these Christians, to think, why don't you just say you're not a Christian? Why don't you just confess that you don't know Christ and I won't kill you? When you have true faith in Christ, it, it overcomes that question. and It's very difficult to get to the level of faith where you're able to do things like that, but you can get there. This level of faith is not just for great men of God named Paul and people who write the Bible and people like Billy Graham. No, this is for you and me. God pulls out people who have lives that want to change because we realize we're born and with this sin nature. We're doing things we shouldn't be doing, acting in ways that are not right. We see the results in our lives and we wish that some of them would change. And we're looking for hope in our lives. Hope by definition in the Bible, comes through trusting Christ. Trust and faith are synonymous with one another. 
If you trust your faith in Christ enough, if you trust Christ enough to believe that he is your Lord and Savior, it's easy to answer that question when you're posed. Are you a believer? Yes, I am. You can beat me with rods. You can beat me with lashes. No, I'm not going to be excited about it. I'm sure Paul was not uh, the most happy man on the planet. Uh, As I've said before, Paul got straight to the point. When you get beat up a couple times for being a Christian, and you see other Christians sort of messing around, you, I imagine that, that you're quick to get on those folks, and you see that in Scripture, where Paul is also the most loving. He, he is very loving and kind with his words, and he's generous with the truth about grace and mercy that come from a relationship with Jesus Christ. But he's also quick to be like, y'all stop messing. Y'all stop fooling around. Y'all over there playing Christian, you need to be Christian. Y'all over there talking about being Christian, but you're not doing what God has asked of you. And I imagine being bit by a poisonous snake would <laughs> make somebody a little honry. Not that he wasn't telling the truth, but I'm sure it was a little easier for him to say those things to people who were messing around because he realized he, he went through the real persecution. He went through the fire. This was his sentence from God. Talk about finding God's sentence in your life. Usually is not something that you would choose for yourself. I wouldn't have chosen to be a minister. I'm sure Paul wouldn't have chosen to, you know, share the faith of the people he was murdering. And I definitely wouldn't think that Paul, if he would have had a choice, would have signed up to, as God asked him to be in God's sentence for Paul, I will show Paul how much he must suffer for my name. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Oh, Sometimes the worst persecution we have here in America is just that people make fun of us. Or maybe you you know, have a broken relationship in, in your family because you love Jesus and somebody else thinks it's stupid. That persecution may hurt, but that's, uh, that's not the suffering this is talking about. Uh, whew, to be Paul, I'm excited to see his story, Paul the Apostle of Christ, in theaters now. When we come back, we'll share some more clips with the film. And we'll get into his persecuted life and why it was important to pull out of that for us a message of hope and encouragement for our future. Don't go away. You're listening to the new John Simmons show, part of the testimony house network. Call 314-239-4149. Hey everybody, it's Chris Denman. Be sure to join myself, Travis Terrell, and the cast of thousands on St. Louis Live, Monday through Friday, 7 to 10 a.m. right here on 920 a.m. WGNU, and stream it online at weareliveradio.com. Today we decided to walk to school. To school. At, At the corner, corner we, we waited, waited to cross, cross the street. street. The stoplight stop counted, counted down. down. 15, 15, 14, 41, 31... I mean, 13? We, we took, took a left, left on Carroll Garden cool Street. Garden Street? Loud, Loud music was, was coming from, from a car. car. Danny's a smart kid, but he gets so distracted. There were so many other sounds. I didn't know what to focus on. Danny, Earth to Danny. Suddenly, he realized he forgot his homework again. I left my homework on the table. At the, the school, school steps, steps, we hugged goodbye. goodbye. I, I really, really hope he doesn't have another, another bad day at school today. today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. That's why there's understood.org, a free online resource for the parents of the one in five kids with learning and attention issues. 
Get personalized recommendations, practical tips, daily access to experts, and more. Go from misunderstanding to understood.org. Brought to you by Understood and the Ad Council. Well, hello. This is Travis Durrell from St. Louis Live. My secret to being an amazing, multi-talented radio host, it's all about the three C's. Cool, chill, and compose. Are you kidding me? You're holding Jay-Z, who used to hustle and sell dope, and you're holding up to the same stature as Donald Trump, the president of the United States? Check your blood pressure. Stream us live at WGMU920AM.com. Be sure to download the app for your smartphone, and as always, stay cool. That's WGMU920AM.com. Every topic is on the table here at WGNU 920 AM and 106.9 FM. Want to start writing or add to God's sentence for your life? Want to learn what that means? Visit NewJohnSimmons.com for articles and videos that can help you find a future and a hope for your life today. Now, back to the New John Simmons Show. Welcome back, everybody. It's the new John Simmons Show. If you would like to get a copy of my book, Finding Faith, it's available over at newjohnsimmons.com. This book tells the story of how you can find more faith in your life to do the things that God asks you to do. I use testimonies, biblical scriptures, and engaging conversation to really help you find more faith in your life. The apostles asked for more of it. They tried to use it, and it didn't work. There's reasons why God is pleased when we use faith. We go through those things in the book, Finding Faith, available wherever books are sold, and also at newjohnsimmons.com. Tonight we're talking about this film that's come out recently, Paul, the Apostle of Christ movie. It is a film I'll be seeing myself, but I want to encourage you all to see it as well because It's important that we support Christian programs. It's important for a number of reasons. One, so they keep making them. Two, so we can encourage those filmmakers who are, you know, going through the years of effort and getting all of these things together and getting together the financing and blessing these things that God has obviously put his hand towards if they're, you know, rooted in Scripture, obviously. And when we support these things, not only will we see more of them, but... It might encourage the next person who wants to make the next film or write the next book or share their faith with their family or find Jesus Christ in the movie theater. There's all sorts of reasons behind the scenes where years from now we may hear stories of how someone was really inspired by a film like this or this film in particular. And then they started to write God's plan and sentence for their life simply because they were encouraged through something like this. And it's for everybody. There's no one in the world who the gospel message isn't for. We've already talked about it in in short detail. Paul killed Christians. You might have tattoos. You might think that my God doesn't accept people like you, or maybe you think your skin color is wrong, or your country of origin is wrong, or maybe it's because your parents don't believe in Jesus. Being persecuted is like it was in the early church, is not like it is now. It's okay in where we live to seek out Christ as your Lord and Savior. In some countries and in some areas, it's against the law. So even if you think it's stupid, don't try and suppress others from doing this for themselves. I find that very difficult, but we do get persecuted. Early church got persecuted because they were being martyred for Christ. Paul, through the course of his life, wrote a testimony where he went from a murderer to a fulfiller of the gospel in the lives of others. Let's play a clip from the cast uh, in the producers of this show talking about the journey of Paul to not being persecutor, but being persecuted. Saul of Tarsus was the famous St. Paul, as everybody knows him, before becoming St. Paul, he was the biggest enemy of the first Christians until he had this vision. He saw the Lord in front of him and then he was converted into Christianity and he became one of the most iconic saints of Christianity. 
think of God's grace and mercy and who's the one embodiment of that, it's always Saul to me. You know, somebody who was persecuting Christians goes from the basically greatest persecutor of the early church into the greatest evangelizer in all of church history. So it's always been something that stuck with me. When I had my encounter with Christ and really experienced that grace and love and mercy for the first time, Paul's story has always resonated with me. So after making full of grace, it was it was immediately the next choice. There was nobody else to focus on. I've spent 30 years playing Billet and I guess that experience of playing men who always control others. It's a fantastic resource for me to know what that is, to have played all those people and to have done all those terrible things, not personally, but as a character over the years. And now to get a chance to expiate those sins and that guilt through the character of Paul. And I find it very uplifting. What I think God sees when he sees someone like Saul, he sees a man or a woman on an extreme kind of scale of passion and anger and hatred. I feel like God takes great pleasure in flipping those people. The extreme nature of Paul against the Christians when it was flipped was just the other side of the spectrum, 180 degrees over that extreme love for spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I think it's that passion. And, and ultimately, when I whittle down the message from Paul, nobody is beyond the reach of the grace of God. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. I think that's such a powerful message that the world needs to hear. To hear Paul say, I'm the chief of sinners, and yet I can do nothing without the grace of God. Everything is redeemed. God is not standing over us going, shame, guilt. He's saying, I love you. I want you. Come to me. God loves us before our sin, yes. After our sin, yes. And also during our sin. And a lot of people said, mm, no, God doesn't have that kind of grace. God doesn't have that kind of big heart. Yes, he does. He loves us. I couldn't have said it better myself. This is the cast and crew and the creators of Paul, the Apostle of Christ movie, talking about the journey of from Saul to Paul. Of course, he had his name changed by God in the course of his testimony where he became a murderer of Christians and transformed through Christ into someone who shared the gospel with the lost. You can't make stories like these up. You might think you can. You might look at this, at this movie and say that's a, a fictional account. Well, there might be fictional accounts in the movie, but the story is very real. And it's real to us because we can all recognize someone who's not good enough because none of us are good enough. We all mess up. We all make bad choices in life. We don't always have the results that we expect or that we desire. We can't always live a perfect life. The Bible says that we can't because we live in a sinful body and we're you know, tempted by a devil who's constantly out to steal, kill, and destroy our lives. Yet so many of us hear the message of hope through the gospel and the story of Jesus Christ, the greatest story ever told, and we think it's fictional or made up. Paul was just like you. If you're a person who thinks that the Bible is just a book, and that Christ is just a name people worship, and they're all crazy people. I've had lots of friends in my life who have been very <laughs> uh, entertained by my new faith in Christ and at some of the expenses of some nice words. Calling my God a spaghetti monster once, I believe. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. We all fall. We all fall down. Yep, It's like Humpty Dumpty. But in our lives, if we don't find Christ, we're going to spend eternity in hell. That's not me being a, a pushy Bible thumper. I don't wish you to go there. But ultimately, you can find hope today. Not just on your deathbed, not just you know in the last-minute glimpse 
of your life and you want to spend eternity in heaven. And so you give your life to Christ like my grandpa did, you know, moments before he passed away. But you're a person who realizes that stuff's going wrong in your life right now. You've done some things wrong. Maybe you haven't seen the gospel the way you should. Maybe you think that, you know, stories like Paul are only written for people who are good Christians. As I like this quote from Eric Roth, the producer on the film. He says, people like Paul are just like us. They weren't born with halos around their head. None of us are born with a halo around our head. And so we need Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, and we need to find him as our Savior in order to get that forgiveness. David Zellin, another producer on the film, said, No one is outside of God's grace. We all have a chance. You have a chance to find salvation through Jesus Christ. Maybe you find it this weekend at your Easter service. Maybe you already have it. Maybe you just need to start seeking to walk out God's sentence for your life and fulfilling the greatest story ever told in your life by using your gifts and your talents to serve God and serve others. We'll leave here with a couple quotes from the man who directed the film and also wrote the screenplay, Andrew Hyatt. He said, in times like these, we are so desperate to hear several things, and this movie touches on all of them. We're desperate to hear that we're loved. Isn't that true? In a, in a time and place where everybody, you know, wants their identity to be noticed and wants their opinion to be valued. Really, we want the opinion and the value of the God who created us. We're looking for our value in our identities to be given to us by other people and to be validated through their opinions. But it's our love from Christ who can ultimately help us understand our identity, which is not as a man or a woman, but as a child of God. That's what our identity should be. We're desperate to hear that mercy and grace are real. We're desperate to hear that God is bigger than us, that God loves us, and that we cannot fall too far from his grasp. Jesus came and found me in a dark casino where there was no light shining near me or around me. He gave up for a moment talking to other people about himself to come and find me just like the lost sheep parable in the Bible. No matter who you are, no matter what you've been through, God has a place for you in his kingdom. All you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Christ is Lord and you shall be saved. Be encouraged this weekend, guys. Easter is going to be a good time. Paul, the Apostle of Christ, out now. Check paulmovie.com for tickets and information about the film. That's going to do it for tonight's show. I want to thank Curtis behind the glass, and I want to thank all of you for listening live on your radio and watching with us over on Facebook. Don't forget to head over to newjohnsimmons.com to purchase the book. Visit the Apple iTunes store to get the podcast. And as always, guys, we'll see you tomorrow at 9. And until then, I pray you discover a future and a hope for your life today. Thanks for listening to the new John Simmons Show, part of the Testimony House Network. To replay this episode or listen to past episodes, look for the new John Simmons Show podcast on your mobile device. Stay connected to the show. Read the latest news, blog posts, and see behind-the-scenes photos by following at New John Simmons on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you would like to learn more about how you can begin to write God's sentence for your life, or join a growing community of people who are finding passion, vision, and faith for their lives, please visit newjohnsimmons.com. Until next time, we pray you discover a future and a hope for your life today.